Hello everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood, well-rounded mermaid, Iloria, and boy have I got some great info for you today. And a lot of fun, too. I have extensively researched a huge list of mermaid-related movies and TV shows from all around the world. So if you want to see what I recommend and what I suggest you steer clear of, stay with me and I'll see you in Two Shakes and a Merse Tale. See you soon. I have long kept a catalog of my favorite mermaid movies and TV, but for this adventure, I have gone to the depths trying to find the best and encountering sometimes the worst of mermaid entertainment. So, Sit down, get a snack, grab your snuggy tail, and let's get into some mermaid TV and movies. <laughs> now, of course, a lot of us know about Splash and The Little Mermaid. For most of us mermaid fans, like the second you dive into the mermaid realm, The Little Mermaid and Splash are two of the most iconic, beloved films of all time. Splash was my first mermaid movie ever. I have been crossing my legs in the swimming pool ever since, crossing my ankles, swimming like a dolphin, practicing my name pronunciation in front of TVs, hoping they would crack. And if you're not getting all of these references, you please have to go watch Splash. It is such an incredible movie. The other iconic film that I mentioned is, of course, Disney's The Little Mermaid. Animated adventure, incredible characters, absolutely wonderful. And as it happens, there are three. They basically go a following of uh, her daughter once she and Eric have come on land and their adventures of their child. The third one is Ariel's Beginning, which is of the, the two sequels, my personal favorite. I just saw it and I absolutely love it. It doesn't quite compare to the first one, but between the two sequels, I really, really love Ariel's Beginning. Just a beautiful, fun, really engaging story. The next two films are two absolute loves of mine, but I would consider them more adult movies. These are not kids' movies, in my opinion. We've got The Lady in the Water, which is an old M. Night Shyamalan movie absolutely beautiful, heart-tugging. If you're a mermaid fan, you will love this film. The next is The Shape of Water. This movie is so artful and so intelligent and so beautifully done. I cannot express. Like, the acting, the music, the storytelling, the imagery, and there's sign language involved. And if you know anything about me, if you're familiar with my mermaid sign project, which is something that I did a while back and still continue to trickle out bits into the world, it's a project that I have surrounding mermaids and ASL, American Sign Language. So sign language is very close to my heart. So when I saw The Shape of Water and saw that this movie touches on that, uh, I'm not going to give you a full review of everything on this list, it would take six hours, but for my absolute favorites, I want you to know a little bit about these films and why I have hearted them. <laughs> Another big favorite of mine is Mei Ren Yu, which is also entitled The Mermaid. This is a Chinese film, and it's more recent. This is also, I would consider, an adult film, but it might be okay for kids, depending on your discretion. The same with a wonderful, wonderful classic, Miranda, and its sequel, Mad About Men. Two wonderful, wonderful vintage films that, if you're a Mary Poppins fan, might have a familiar face in there. I would consider these kind of more adult films, but there's nothing, there's no nudity, there's no raciness. They're just old-timey films, and they are perfectly family-friendly, in my opinion. That's something I definitely want to touch on when it comes to film, when it comes to good and bad, what's appropriate, what's not. Viewer discretion is advised. We all have our own tastes. 
We all have our own loves. What I might adore, you might despise. What I might think is appropriate, you might not. So take everything I say with a grain of salt and please judge all of these films and bits of entertainment, movie, TVs, whatever, on your own terms. Next we've got another classic, Mr. Peabody and the Mermaid. This is just another black and white wonderful fantasy piece. Lots of underwater footage, that's quite nice. Next up we've got Aquamarine, which is a modern fantasy movie about some teenage girls who encounter a mermaid. Next we have Mermaids, which is a 2003 PAX made for TV film that was supposed to be the pilot for a series that didn't happen. Another wonderful mermaid movie. This was a made for TV movie by Disney, the 13th year, which is one of the few mainstream movies and TV experiences, bits of entertainment that features a merman, in this case, a merboy. Definitely lots of fun. Another one that I enjoy, some people don't, Fish Tales. I thought this was really cute. Yes, it's cheesy, but like a lot of mermaid movies that you'll find, a lot of them are very lighthearted and fun and don't take themselves too seriously. And this stars Billy Zane, who is one of my old school favorite actors, so this was a treat for me. I thought it was sweet. Next up, we've got My Fairy Tale Love Story. That's T-A-I-L, love story. This is a Filipino movie that has some subtitles in it, but I know enough Spanish that I was able to get by. There is some Spanish interlaced in the Filipino language, um, so I was able to make out a lot of what they said. There's also a lot of English, so even if you don't do subtitles like me, for whatever reasons, you might be able to get through this and still have a lot of fun like I did. Next we have... Lou Over the Wall. Another movie that we've got is Monster High, Great Scarier Reef. Yes, this is for children. I freaking love it. I love Monster High. I think the Monster High dolls are adorable and awesome and weird and alternative. And if I had had access to those as a kid, I would have been over the moon. So if you like the Monster High dolls, the movies, the mythos, check this out. Next we've got Ponyo, a Studio Ghibli film. If you're an, a Hayao Miyazaki fan, you might like this one. We have Sea People, Hearts Atlantis. Sea People is a live action about that very thing. I wouldn't exactly say mermaids, but it might talk a bit about where the mythos of mermaids come from. Hearts Atlantis is a short film that our beloved Hannah Fraser, if you're a big fan of mermaids and are familiar somewhat with some of the more famous mermaids in the world, Hannah Fraser is definitely one of those. And so this is a short film that she featured in. If you're a Sabrina, a Sabrina age, if you're a Sabrina the Teenage Witch fan, Sabrina Down Under was a mermaid related movie centered around that mythos. It was cute if you're a fan of that series. Then we've got one that again is one of those some people like it, some people don't. This movie is called Scales. This is a more recent, I think pretty recent, in the last couple years, a uh, mermaid movie pretty well for children. And if you are into all things aquatic, anything watery related, if you like selkies, which are seal folk, you might really dig these movies. Three wonderful Selkie flicks I absolutely recommend. The first is The Secret of Rowan Inish. This movie is an Irish flick. Beautiful music, Irish actors, takes place in Ireland. Just a gorgeous story. I wouldn't say it's a kid's movie only because for little ones it might be a little slow, but it's rich in culture and I positively adore it. Another is Song of the Sea. This is another Irish film, but this is an animated movie, so a slightly younger audience might be able to get into it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful music. If you have ever seen The Secret of Kells, the same animation and production studio that did that did Song of the Sea. 
gorgeous, gorgeous music and lovely folklore. The last in the Selkie category is called Selkie. <laughs> this one is about a male Selkie, which again, we don't get enough of those. This is kind of like the Selkie version of the 13th year, if that puts it into an age realm and a flavor for you. This is very cute, and that was done by an Australian studio. Those are all the movies that I have seen personally that I would recommend or think that some folks might enjoy that are mermaid related and centered predominantly like the, the mermaid features centrally in the storyline. These next bits are movies that I really enjoyed and had mermaids as tertiary or featuring characters but weren't entirely about the merfolk. We've got Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. Wonderful movie. If you're a Pirates of the Caribbean fan, if you're a pirate fan, you might really like this film. What I love about it is mermaids! And they do the mers in a really cool way. And they feature quite heavily in the storyline, which I, obviously I enjoyed. Next we have Robin Williams's Hook. We've also got Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Merfolk do feature in this version of Harry Potter, however, or this edition of Harry Potter, however, it should be noted that just like The Shape of Water and things like The Creature from the Black Lagoon, etc., uh, they are not your traditional hair flowing long, beautiful cinema type mermaids. They are definitely more uh, piskeen, more fish-like. Next up, we've got mermaid-related horror. And if you are a mermaid fan, as well as a horror fan like myself, you might really, really enjoy these. And there is surprising amount of mermaid-related horror out there. And again, this is all subjective as to what's good and what's not. So your mileage may vary. By the way, when it comes to mermaid horror, none of these are child friendly, at least, again, in my opinion. Please note that none of these horror movies are for kids. Let's just get that straight out there. <laughs> Let's have that said straight out the gate. First up, we've got Killer Mermaid or Nymph. This is a foreign movie and very obviously a B movie, but I had a lot of fun with it. Again, it doesn't take itself too seriously and it's still genuinely kind of creepy in certain moments. I definitely liked it. We've got She Creature, Mermaid Chronicles, which is a, I believe 2003 made for TV movie. May not be everybody's cup of tea, but for the most part, I enjoyed it. Then we have Mermaid, Lake of the Dead, which is a Russian film not quite a mermaid, but it is a water-dwelling creature. Um, good protagonist is dubbed. The version, I watch everything. If the, it is a foreign movie, I don't do well with subtitles because of my vision. Uh, long story, but so this is the one I watched was the dubbed version. I still really liked it. Next up, we've got something that touches on another favorite of mine and it might yours as well if you are a horror fan if you are a hydro horror fan you might like hp lovecraft if you have not heard of him before if you have not read his work before he has many 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 works about creatures from the deep the deep ones that are also supposed these mythological gods and dagon which is a movie in our list today, is from that H.P. Lovecraft universe. And uh, if you are familiar with H.P. Lovecraft's um, The Shadow Over Innsmouth, you might really resonate with this story. And that reminds me, The Creature of the Black Lagoon is another movie that I should have put on here and it's just now occurring to me as I film. There is a water creature in there, a lot like The Shape of Water. It is not your traditional mermaid, but it's a water-dwelling creature. Pretty fun stuff. Next we've got Night Tide. Those are the last of the 
horror that I recommend. Next up, TV shows. Two of my favorites. I'm so grateful that Netflix showed these H2O, which had its own three seasons, and then it had a spin-off called Mako Mermaids. And again, there's a merman in it. Chai Romruin is the male protagonist in that series, at least to begin with. Multiple series now. Netflix, we need more. I know that there's more than just the few series that you have out on Netflix now. So they keep making them. You got to keep sharing them. We want more Mako Mermaids. Next up, we've got The Little Mermaid. They had a TV series. Definitely a fun little series. And now we've got two series that are for adults. Again, I would not recommend these for kiddos. We have Siren created by the Freeform Network. And we have Tidelands. This is another Australian, to my knowledge, more adult, kind of like Siren, but Siren is even almost meant for older teenagers, young adults. Tidelands is a little more mature than even that, I would hazard. Um, but just by a hair. Things that I found out about that I have yet to watch. The Lure. A Mermaid's Tale, that's T-A-L-E. The Little Mermaid, which is a Netflix movie, and I hear that uh, this one, not so good, which is why I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> uh, an old classic, I believe this has uh, Annette Funicello, is Beach Blanket Bingo. I don't know if that has, I was told it has a mermaid in it. It was listed in mermaid movies, so. We've got the Barbie series, Barbie and the Secret Wall, Barbie and a Mermaid's Tale 1 and 2, obviously for Kid Roos. We have The Ring of Endless Light. I think this is a foreign film, and again, because I have such a hard time with subtitles, I have not seen it yet. Same thing with The Lure, this is a subtitled movie. Hey Netflix, or Amazon, I believe this is uh, The Lure is available on Amazon. Can we have a, a dubbed version of this, please? That would be awesome. And if you need a voice actor for that, I'm happy to help. <laughs> Next up, we've got Magic Island, which is an 80s flick. And lastly, in our movies I have yet to see but want to, This Boy Caught a Merman. And if you're interested in LGBTQ themes, I believe this features that, which we also desperately need more of. We need more mers of color, Mers of size, mers who are part of the LGBTQ plus community, with all you creative people out there, with all you actors and writers and songstresses, let's make that happen. I know we could do this and make it magical. Next up are TV series that I have on my list, but I have yet to see. Most of these are foreign series that because of the subtitles, I haven't been able to dip into yet. First we have The Starry Night, The Starry Sea, which is a Chinese series, and I've seen trailers. Y'all, we have got some beautiful men in this. So beautiful. Not that I'm thirsty or anything. <laughs> Next we have Legend of the Blue Sea, which is a Korean series. The Idol Mermaid, which is also Korean. Mr. Merman, which is from Thailand, which by the way, The Starry Night, The Starry Ski Sea has mermen. Legend of the Blue Sea also has mermen. Clearly, uh, Asian filmmakers and production companies are more into the merman thing than people are in the West, which is jacked. We need more merman stories, please. I need to just learn Chinese and Thai. Next we have Diesabel, which is a Filipino TV series. We've got Bermuda Triangle Colorful Pastrale, Pastral, Pastrale, which is a Japanese anime, or I should just say anime because technically all anime is Japanese, Japanese animation. We have Mermaid Melody which is very like Sailor Moon, another anime, another Japanese animated series. And lastly, the spinoff to This Boy Caught a Merman, 
We have Merman in My Tub, which is another animated Japanese TV series, super cute, and is related to that movie that we talked about before. Horror flicks that I have yet to see. Um, some I want to see more than others. <laughs> we have The Siren. I believe that came out not too long ago. Charlotte's Song or Mermaid's Song. Another horror flick that looks kind of fun. Mermaid Down. Cold Skin. Blew My Mind, which is a foreign film. I believe it is German. It may be Dutch. It's hard to tell the language, but I think it's German. Also subtitles. And now, dear friends, lastly, last but definitely leastly, we have the movies that I would caution you to avoid at all costs. The first are frankly because there are no Murs in them, and that's a huge disappointment. The very first is Ondine, O-N-D-I-N-E. It looks so promising. They, they kind of hint at the old Undine myths that there's no fish creature, there's no fantasy, there's no magic, there's no nothing. It's one of those movies that for me, at least, I'm like, give me my two hours back. I know I streamed this, I know I didn't pay anything for it, but I want my time back at least, dear God. Next is not a bad movie! But I put it on this list because it ain't got no mermaids actually in it. This is Cher's Mermaids. It's got Cher and Winona Ryder in it. Super cute movie. I was waiting for some kind of transformation at some point. Nope, there are adorable costumes at the end and that's it. <laughs> so if you're looking for actual mer creatures, water creatures, fantasy, folklore, this is not your thing. Next, we've got The Lighthouse. Oh, friends. <laughs> this has a mermaid in it. She was the good part. <laughs> I was really excited about seeing this. Someone recommended me to see it. Another person recommended I not see it. <sighs> it started off good. It started off promising. I kind of like the stylization, I dug the acting, I was intrigued by the setting, I got reeled in, and about halfway through, the only reason why I powered through it till the very end was it was like a vendetta. I kept, it's one of those where you keep going, it's gotta get better, it's gotta get, no, it doesn't get better, don't do it. Next we have A Mermaid for Christmas. Is cute! There's an actual mermaid in it, if you liked scales, the kids movie that I mentioned earlier, you might dig this. Next up, and lastly, we have something that I had super high hopes for. ABC Lives. It's the live action special, The Little Mermaid. For me as a fan, as an adult maybe, um, as a longtime fan of The Little Mermaid, it just was wow, 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 wow. It was no so good. So, that is it. That is all the movies and TV shows that I could find that were mermaid or water creature related. I know I have forgotten some or I didn't know about some. If there are any that you know of, that you love and enjoy, please let me know in the comments below. I would really love to know, even if it's a foreign film that might have subtitles, if there is a mer involved, I want to see it. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. I know that you, there are lots of options out there right now, and now you have even more. So thank you for spending that time with me. If you would like to keep up with this mermaid and find out what else she's doing. Hit the follow, the subscribe, whatever that thing is called, and the little notification bell if you want to get more videos from yours truly whenever a mermaid video surfaces. I am all over the interwebs on all the social medias. I am on Facebook and I almost said Tumblr. I used to do a lot of Tumblr, not so much. I am on Facebook. I am a big fan of TikTok. I am on Twitter and Instagram. 
So you can find me pretty much everywhere. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to hush. I hope you had fun. And that is it for me. Bye! I have brought you an extensive, exhaustive list of I need to scratch my chest. Hold on. Now? Really? We'll wait. Go on. This is a Filipino. A Filipino. <laughs> that sounds like I'm I'm telling you to fill up my glass of Pino. Blue sea, blue sky, or er, blue stars, blue sea. The first one. <laughs> Hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed. Hope that you liked. What was that?